Hi everyone, this is the installation video for the Auto CC Mode Set board that I've designed and um, that I'm making available in my online shop at ianjohnston.com. So what I'll do is I'm just going to run through the installation of the kit uh, onto the, my own uh, power supply, bench power supply here. This is what you get in the kit, it's all fully ready assembled and in fact I've even plugged the tails into the board uh, into the correct uh, sockets on the board uh, so you get the fully assembled board here uh, the tails and also the three wires that need soldered onto the main control board inside the power supply you also get the four standoffs for mounting it so right now I'll go and fit this board, it just takes a couple of minutes and I'll show you how easy it is Okay, the first thing to do, although it's not strictly necessary, is to remove this tie bar along the top. There's a couple of screws at either end and it simply just lifts off. Doing that, you get much better access onto the main board. The first thing to do is, with the standoffs, they need to be plugged into the top here. You can see that there's a series of holes here. Basically, I'm using the four, four corner holes. So the standoffs just clip into place like that there. The next thing to do is familiarise yourself with the orientation of the board. The, the tails will go down the way like that there and as, as, you can, as you can see the connectors actually offset to one side of the board. That allows a little overhang at this side. The overhang goes towards the outside. So what will actually happen is these tails here will go down between those set of standoffs there and it will go in like that there. However we're not quite ready to um, plug the the standoffs in yet. The first thing we want to do is actually remove the tails from the existing front panel board there and actually connect them into the new board. So let's do that now. When you're pulling out these existing connectors try not to haul at the wires just in case they get pulled out of the connector. Just you know grab the connector itself and it should pull out fairly lightly and then with the tails uh, still connected at the other end, plug them into the new board, into the free uh, vacant sockets on the board. They'll only go in one way because they're keyed so you can't make any errors there. So that's all the wiring done there. The next thing to do is just pull those tails clear and then put the wire in there, group it all together and it'll go between, like I said, between those two standoffs there. So we'll just do that now. And then line up the standoffs and push them into the board. They should just snap into position. There we go, that's that end done. And that's that end done. As soon as you've done that, the board is a lot more secure. The next thing to do is now plug the new tails into the display board. They'll only go in one way, as before. That's it. And then just to tidy up the tails, we're just moving in down like that there. Nearly there, all we've got to do now is a little bit of soldering work now. We're going to solder these three wires here down onto the main board. Okay, the first wire that we're going to put in place is the zero volts wire. That's the green wire. There's a small ground plane along here uh, with a pad at the end. We're actually going to use that pad there. Uh, in my case, it's already tinned up, but you will see that uh, it will naturally need tin because it'll just be a hole through the board there. So the first thing we want to do is just tin up the hole. And then bring the green wire down. And that's it soldered in place there. The next wire is the grey wire. There's two diodes on the board here, D3 and D4, and the two cathodes of the diodes are at the top, and they're actually connected together. However, we're just going to go on to D3 there, so we'll just tin up D3. These are surface mount um, diodes, so be a little bit careful. You're not putting too much heat in, otherwise you, you, you might uh, drop the diode off. So taking the wire, the grey wire, just solder it in place at the cathode of D3. 
the final wire is the pink wire. Now it has to be soldered on to pin 5 of IC10, which is right here. The IC is upside down, so following the pins around 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is at this bottom left hand corner as we look at the board, um, which is a bit is fortunate enough that it's uh, easy to get to with the soldering iron. So the first thing you want to do is, with a little bit of heat, just tin up the surface mount leg of that IC. Be careful not to um, short out between the adjacent pins. And then with the tinned wire, probably easier to come down like I'm doing rather than go in like that there. It's just come down the side of the IC here and overlap the wire onto the pin and there, solder it in place. I think by doing it that way you're keeping clear of pin 6 which, which is the adjacent pin. By doing it that way there's little chance of uh, solder bridging the, uh, the two pins together. And then with that there, that's the board installed. And before we power up I'll just bring the camera around so that you can see uh, everything in place there. The three wires, you can see underneath the board there, the four connectors, uh, the relays at the end of the board there on the left hand side, the wiring going off up to the back of the display board there. And then on the top side of the board we've got the two ICs and uh, various components on the board there. So let's power it up. Okay, I've got the mains cable reconnected at the back of the power supply, uh, so hopefully you can see the board there and you can also see the display here and the push buttons. So let me power up the power supply. And there we go. Uh, the pots on the front of the power supply should uh, react as normal, adjusting the voltage, etc. And you should have basically zero on the display there for the, the current. So the first thing to do is check the operation. Put the, the power supply into CC mode as normal, hit the switch there, the push button there. And then using the up-down buttons here, you should be able to adjust the current setting there, as you see there. And at the same time as you are using those up-down controls, you'll see the LED on the board there is lit. Uh, signifying that the relay is ch in a changeover state uh, giving you operation of the display. Let everything go, after a second or two the display will revert back to uh, the main current output display and the LED in the board should go off. So we'll do that again, I'll just hit the button as soon as you hit it and adjust the current either up or down, the LED will stay lit. So of course you can just press it at any time and get an instant readout there of the current setting. Just hit it once, there you go, 3.48 amps. The relay will switch over and then switch back again. So basically that's all there is to it. There's no cutting of wires, there's no uh, breaking of uh, tracks on the main control board. It's basically plug and play apart from three small solder uh, wires on the control board. If like me you've got the a dual CSI power supply here, the dual output one, you will actually have the, another transformer and another control board at the back there. So what I'm going to do now is show you how to get in into the board there to make the similar solder connections that we did on this board here. Okay, the first thing to do is to remove this tie bar here. That will give me better access to the control board there. Okay, the next thing to do is flip the power supply onto its side with the control boards facing up the way. That's it there. Okay, I've repositioned the camera around to the other side now so that we can see what's going on. Um, the next thing to do is actually mount the board in exactly the same way I did the first board. Uh, get it all wired up, get the standoffs in place and all ready for soldering the three wires on. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, there's the board in place. Um, this is actually my prototype board, hence the links, etc. But it's exactly the same installation procedure as the production one. So there we are, the board's um, snapped into its standoff, so I've got the wire and loom in place. The only thing I've got to do is solder on these three wires here. But what I'm actually going to do is to give better access onto the control board is there are some screws on the underside of the power supply for mounting the transformer. I'm actually going to loosen those screws and let the power let the transformer drop down. Now by having the power supply 
on its side like this, it's not going to drop too far because there isn't that much uh, room underneath the transformer. So it's quite handy. I don't need to disconnect any wiring. Just going to loosen the screws and let it drop down slightly. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, this is the underside of the power supply. You can see that's the four screws for the transformer. I've removed the top two, but I've only actually loosened the bottom two, just by a turn or two, and it's enough to let the transformer move in its mountain, enough that will give me access to the board. So as you can see, there's the transformer there. It's just going from that position there, and it's dropped down to about there. Now actually, it's not quite enough. I need to go a little bit more but if you just move the power supply, uh, the, the, the transformer is actually sitting on the bench now, but I can actually just lift the power supply uh, and it will actually uh, effectively give me more room. So there it is. I've propped something underneath the power supply just to give that extra lift and I've now got uh, good enough access onto the board. What is this? A letter for me. And that's it done. Okay, and as you can see, that's the power supply mounted back up onto the shelf. And as you can see, I've got the single channel one as well. They've, so all three channels, so across both of the power supplies, uh, have both been converted. And as you can see, I've got the up-down control there. Same there. And over in channel two of the dual mode one there. So that's the modifications made. Okay, and my next job tonight is assembling up some of these blank boards that I've got made. As you can see, I've started working on this one already.